What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. Guess what is finally here? That wide body that I was promising you guys about. So I've got the wide body kit right here inside these box. I just opened it up and I test fitted the passenger, no actually the driver's side of the car. I took the old fender flares off of the fenders and replaced them with these aftermarket ones. Now I'm going to show you guys what they look like. So taking a look at the car right now, on the passenger side right here, these are the stock fender flares. And you can see that, well, the wheels that we have right here don't exactly fit inside the arch. So we're going to have to put the wide body kit over top to make these things fit. And you can see the size difference. So there's a good, I'd say, inch and a bit that we need to make up to make these wheels fit. Okay, so this is stock setup with the aftermarket wheels. If we move to the driver's side, I've got the fender flares just test fitted up and basically where it's going to be sitting on the car. Now, nothing's really mounted in place, nothing's painted. This is just how they came straight out the box. I already went ahead and removed the little clips found on the back side of the fender that are holding the fender flares on. So, it just slides in on that corner down there and then from the front of the car, the fender has to come this way. And with that out, we have all of these holes, and that's where the little bolts were held in place to the fender. And these are what we're going to be using to install our new wide body fenders on top of here. So these fenders are pretty much a direct bolt on. There's a little bit of modifying that you need to do to the body to get these things to work. Only if you plan on using a really large wheel and tire setup for the wide body. So it's basically the same kind of install, so you're going to slide. Actually, no, you're first going to bring the front part forward into the bumper. And then it sits basically... Actually, okay, one second. Oh, I've got to line this up. So it's going to sit kind of like that. It's going to be something along those lines. Now, one thing that I noticed when I put the other side on is the inner part of the wheel well. So because the original fender was designed to use smaller fender flares, the inside part looks a little different. So this little lip right here is going to be an issue when we install the wide body kit. So once we have that on there, there's going to be that little lip. And if we have a wheel that's going to come up here and the tire comes up under the suspension's load, when that comes up, it's going to be basically chewing away at this. So I've already gone ahead and installed the driver's side. And what I did is I used an angle grinder to cut this part down. So you see this like little lip that comes out past the fender? Well, what I did is I cut the entire part here that sticks out. So when the wheel comes up, it's not going to be rubbing on this part. So on the driver's side, I basically cut up this much metal all around the entire arch. So this came off of the fender, and then after that, because I cut this down and I had exposed metal, I had to cover this up so that it wouldn't rust. So if we come into the driver's side wheel well, you'll be able to see that little lip that I was talking about, and you can see that it's completely gone. So the fender flare mounts up right there with those bolts all around the perimeter of the arch, and then I cut off that little lip that was coming on here so that when I have a big wheel in here, it's not going to be interfering and I have a lot of space for the tire. Now, because the tires I have are slightly oversized, this definitely needs to come off. So you guys see that lip that was gone? That lip definitely needs to go if you want to run a set of large tires. Now looking upwards at the fender flare and the stock fender, to determine how much of the fender you need to cut, what I did is I put two bolts through here that secure the fender flare onto the fender. And then right here, each one of these like little mounts are where the bolt, screw, and nut, and all that stuff is going to be mounting in and securing the fender on. Now, next up, I'm going to grab a Sharpie marker, and then underneath here, I'm just going to make a little line as to where like the cutoff is for the fender. So I'm just going to do that around the entire thing, and then at that point, I'll be able to determine how much metal I can keep versus how much needs to go. So basically everything underneath my Sharpie line, I'm going to remove. You should do that for the entire thing. And that'll give you a good idea as to how much metal you need to cut. Now it's better to do this, make sure you get all your measurements, get it all done properly once because as soon as you start cutting up your fender, you can't go back. Then once you take the fender flare off, 
you can kind of gauge as to how much metal you need to remove because we need to cut basically underneath this Sharpie line around the entire thing. Now to make it so that you have a nice easy way to cut this, I'm gonna be using a piece of tape and outlining this basic circle so we can trim it off. So I'm gonna be using a roll of 3M automotive tape. I'm gonna find where it begins. I'm just gonna be making like a nice curve so I know what part I can trim down while I'm cutting. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm just making a line with the tape and then afterwards I'm gonna follow this up with an angle grinder. Now I'm only gonna be trimming off um, like the little flared part on the fender. So I'm not gonna be actually trimming off each one of these little circles. I'm gonna to try to leave those alone. So the only part that's gonna be interfering with us is gonna be this lip because this comes down and it's sticking right in the center. So I'm gonna be basically trimming on the outside part of this tape line. One final thing to check before you go ahead and just start grinding is make sure that there's not anything important behind your, where you're going to be sticking the grinder. So make sure there's no wires, make sure there's no electrical connectors, no nothing found behind here. Because the grinder is going to go through this metal and it's going to protrude on the back side. So if there's anything behind here that's important, you don't want to cut that and go through it. Now to get started with hacking up your fenders, Safety is a must, so use a set of goggles that'll protect all the sparks that come from your angle grinder along with a set of gloves. And if you're smart too, a set of long sleeve shirts would do you pretty well too. Now what I'm gonna be using to cut the fenders and make it a little room is I'm using a four and a half inch angle grinder with a metal cutting wheel. You can see it's very thin, a metal cutting wheel, and I'm gonna be using this to contour the arch and trim up all the metal that we need to remove. I'm gonna be doing this exact same procedure for the front and for the back. Now, once I have that cut, I'm also gonna to need to take care of the bare metal so that it doesn't rust and start eating away at the fender. But I'll get into that after I'm done showing you guys how to cut this. So before you get started, make sure you have the tape where you want it, make sure you're following the proper line that you want, and be comfortable before you start grinding. If you're gonna get into a certain position that's really weird and awkward by the end, and that's where you're gonna be prone to be making mistakes. If you're gonna be in that situation, move, get comfortable, change the angle. And if you have to, which way does this turn? Turn this, turn the little dust shield to protect, say, whatever's around from making a big mess. If this is gonna be grinding out, say, towards the camera, I'm gonna wanna have it so this is blocking that and it's gonna be protecting this, for example. But yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. So I've already done the driver's side of the car, next up is the passenger side. And then there's this piece now removed from the car. Now this is enough room for our tire to fit in here should it go under load. And this is still enough meat for us to mount our wide body fender flares. Now since I used just a cutting wheel, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, probably with the Dremel, just to make all this metal nice and round and well, not really jagged and a lot cleaner. So I'm just gonna grab a Dremel, clean all of this up so it's a nice smooth line. And then after that, we're gonna need to protect this from rusting. So 
So once you have the fender basically ready to go, and it's pretty much cut up just how you're gonna have it, we're gonna have to protect this little bottom edge that's bare metal. So because this panel and even the rear quarter, once we get to it, because they're both made out of steel, if we were to leave it like this, in a matter of no time, as soon as this gets wet, as soon as there's humidity, moisture in the air, this panel will start to rust out. So even if you have any areas that are like this right here, See how that's bare metal? That's gonna rust out. So you can do many things to protect it. You can primer it, paint it, clear coat it. You can do that. Now what I'm going to do, and it's a lot more durable I find, is I'm gonna be basically undercoating the car in a very hard, durable paint. This right here is the paint that I'm gonna be using. It's called Chassis Saver. It's a very durable, hard paint. It's kind of like undercoating. It's the same kind of hardness, but it's a lot easier to apply. So you're gonna open this up like a regular paint can, and we're going to brush this stuff on the panel. So once we're done with this, we're gonna have a nice coating of this paint on the outside perimeter of the fender. Since I want this to last, I wanna make it look really nice for a long time, I'm gonna be masking up the part of the fender that isn't going to be exposed. And then everything basically below this line, below the tape, I'm gonna be using um, a very durable paint to protect it from rusting. So I want all of this to be covered in the chassis saver, all of this down here. So I'm using a little paintbrush like this. I'm just gonna dip it inside my little quart of the paint. I'm gonna apply it and brush it onto the panel. Now this stuff, it goes on not too thin, but when it dries, it basically levels itself out. So if you have any runs in the product, you wanna try and sort those out and remove them so that once it dries, you don't see that run. You can paint over, you can use this stuff over paint, you can use it over bare, like rusting steel. So if there's any nuts, any bolts that you wanna to get to and you wanna cover up and make it look nice, you can use this and basically use it straight on. There's not really much prep you need to do. Now, what I'm really trying to emphasize with this product is that this stuff it works really well and it's a very strong rust preventative. So around this entire edge right here, basically the entire thing right here, I wanna cover and make sure that I get that very, very well because that part there doesn't have any paint on it. So I wanna try and get paint going on this side and also on this side of the fender. That way we've got our coverage on there. And to make it look good, I'm just gonna be following this line and applying a little bit of this stuff at a time. So again, any runs you wanna try and like pick up. And you probably wanna do about two coats of this stuff to make it really strong and make it last. Now I'm gonna continue the same process for the entire fender, both on the outside and on the inside. I'm gonna let this sit for about half an hour. I'm gonna come back and then put on a second coat. Now, you really wanna focus on that outside edge that's exposed steel so that it's not going to rust out. I know I'm really stressing on this and I know I'm repeating myself, but it is very important when you're chopping up your fenders like this. After the second coat of the chassis saver is on, while the paint is still wet, you're gonna grab the tape and peel it up. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfectly clean line, but this is it. Two coats in. Just gonna peel the entire thing off. Now all of this, it's not gonna matter if you paint it blue, pink, green, or orange. Um, regardless of whatever color you paint it, this is all going to be covered up. So it's not a big deal. Just gonna take this off. And if there's any spots that have any runs, make sure you address them before all of this dries. 24 hours later, once this is all basically dry, we can now go ahead and mount up our fender flare over top of the fender. Now the way that we mount this up to the car is that on the back side, we're gonna be basically be mounting a bolt, washer, and nut through the fender into the fender flare, like basically inside of here. There's gonna be about seven of them per fender, and once you have those in, this fender is basically gonna be installed. Now once that's test fitted, we can go ahead and put our bumper on, attach everything back up, and then test fit with our wheels. The way the car is right now, the flares are mounted, the fenders are cut, and everything is protected so it's not going to rust out. So if we come in down here, we'll be able to see that there's nothing that's gonna be protruding with the tire at this height. You can see if you go all the way up more, we've got the fender that was in there before, 
We chopped it up, put that chassis saver on there, and all this is gonna be good to go. Now, all the bolts are in there, and if you'll take note, when you look in, to the fender, you can still see the pepper white. Now, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think what I'm gonna do down the road is just clean all of that up, remove any dirt, and then use the same chassis saver on all of it, so it not only looks black and uniform, but it's completely protected from the elements. So say if I drive this thing in the rain, it's not going to be an issue. It's not going to start rusting on me in a matter of no time. Now, it is covered in paint, but down the road, rust is you know definitely going to be a problem, especially with me living in Canada, and that's gonna take care of it. So with the fenders on, front and back wide body kit is basically done now i'm not sure if i'm going to paint it yet because i also want to get a body kit that's going to be replacing the front bumper the side skirt along with the rear bumper found on the back now that doesn't come with the side parts here painted so think of it like this so all of this part here that my finger is on is all going to be basically raw plastic and it, the same thing kind of happens to the front so this part here this little smudge part there is gonna be all plastic and it has like a little lip on it. I'll, I'll see if I can find that kit and I'll try to link it in the description box if you guys are curious to see what it looks like, but that's what I wanna pick up for this thing. I just wanted to try and see what the wheels would look like, the stock wheels with spacers on these fender flares. So I've got 25 millimeters of spacers at the front and uh, 25 plus eight, that's 33 millimeters in the back. So even still, even with that amount of spacer, that's still not enough to make the wheels flush with the fenders. Now I'm waiting on, on those set of 17 by eight and a half apex wheels. As soon as I get those in, those are gonna be mounted on the car. These tires are gonna be mounted on those wheels. And then this wide body kit is basically gonna be good to go. Now I still wanna go ahead and try and paint up these fenders. I'm not sure if I wanna do that yet because I can choose to either wrap the entire car or go ahead and paint it. Not quite sure what I wanna do, but that's just, you know, I'm just spitballing. But this is it. Fenders are on. Both sides. Car looks good. I'm really happy about this. Now guys, here it is. Wide body kit is finally on. Mini is ready to go. Now I've got, as I said, the spacers front and back, so the fitment doesn't look too bad with these wheels, but I definitely want to take care of this and get a different set of wheels so that I can not only put the fat rubber on here and go from a 215 tire to a 255, but it'll also make the wheels flush to the fenders. So right now it's not horrible fitment, but it still needs a little bit of work. But here it is, wide body kit is finally in. Now I got the wide body kit from Keep It Aesthetics. Now the fitment isn't, it's not the best, but it's not horrible, like it fits up nicely. The only concern that I have with this thing is, so say here at the front, if you get down, it doesn't come all the way to the bottom part of the bumper. Now it's not a huge deal, and it's only because I'm very detail oriented that I really noticed it, but I mean, if you're just standing here like this, and you're just looking at the car, you wouldn't be able to tell. So that's the procedure for installing these wide body fender flares on the Mini. Once I have the wheel and tire setup sorted out for the car with the wide body kit, I wanna take this thing to the track and see how stupid this thing is going to be able to grip onto the road. Now, if you guys remember last year, I took my Honda Accord to the track and I timed some of my lap times and my best times going around Cayuga. Now, I wanna do the exact same thing with this thing and I wanna see how much better of a time I can get with this car versus the Accord. This thing is not only smaller, it weighs less, it potentially has more power, it's got more grip, and it should handle and make a better lap time than the Accord. Only time will tell, and actually putting the car on the track, I'll be able to notice that difference. Anyways, guys, if you have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.